Hello chess friends, welcome back to the chess grind. Another day for some chess. Playing as white, playing the usual opening. And we are playing Ooh. S E Q anime from El Salvador. Spain. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Um, let's see. Philidor. I think there's an opportunity to play d4 here, right? I don't know if it's a trap or not. <clears throat> I'm just going to try something different. I'm kind of in the mood to just mix up the openings here. So, I don't know the correct response to this opening to the Philidor. Uh, but I'm just going to try it. What's the worst that can happen? I guess the worst is I could lose. Best is I could win. Either way, I'll be okay with the outcome. <laughs> um, okay. How about we just trade off some pawns here? If he takes with his d-pawn, honestly, I'm just gonna go for the queen trade. I think this just puts me in an advantage right away. Yeah, so I can live with that. Uh, honestly, I, I'm totally okay with that. Now, the question is just how do we want to develop? So my king is uh, kind of out in the open here. So I would like to prevent the check here. Um, I think if he goes b4 with his bishop... I'll either guard with the knight on c3 or play bishop d2. But I believe for now, bishop c4 is a safe move. Maybe d3 would have been a little bit safer. Interesting. I'll look for the early castle and then I might be able to pressure him on the open file that we have here. The open D file. I want to say this position is in my favor so far. I believe the queen trade was the way to go. He could always block with the bishop, uh, I suppose. More than likely he'll do that. Yeah, that's understandable. So we have to remember here that his bishop is pinned because of the rook here on d1. So that's something to remember. That his bishop is basically null and void at this point. Which I suppose means I could go something like e6, right? Uh, not really. I was thinking e6 takes the bishop, but then he does have the recapture as well. So instead of getting too carried away with these really early attacks, I'll just focus a bit more on development. And I could just trade off knights here as well. That's an option. I don't have a great move with a dark square bishop at this point. I do have the option of just trading knights off and getting my pawn a little bit further up the board. That is an option too. 
getting the pawn onto d5. I'll play it slightly safer here. Also, I do need to keep in mind that, oh, yeah, b2 is actually undefended. Hmm. Currently. Hmm. Okay. I'm honestly kind of just feeling the knight trade here. So I feel like my pieces are mostly developed minus the a1 rook. Um, so I'd like to just start trading off pieces down the middle. I have a really big advantage here and I want the goal here to be to open up the center. He's got three very inactive pieces still on his back rank. I more or less just have one. <clears throat> okay. So we have to keep in mind that his bishop is no longer pinned here because he's blocked. So I could bring the bishop up, or I'd rather just connect these four pawns, or connect the e-pawn to the c-pawn, rather. This also forces his knight to make a move. Sure. I'm debating if I want to go d3 or e2. Probably e2 is the only move. Um, I'd like to leave a defender for d5. The d5 pawn. So, let's see. Yeah, this is the safest move for now. I might consider attacking his knight as well here. I believe his knight won't have anywhere to go. Let's see, so this pawn's not attacked, so that's something to keep in mind. And so if I go d2 with the bishop, he really can't go b3 or c4. Yeah, so all his escapes are blocked. Right? Because boom, 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 attacked, attacked, attacked. So I believe I just win his knight here. Um, he could always just defend this with his pawn too. And I would be okay with that trade. I'll put his pawns into a really awkward spot. He won't have anywhere to run. He won't have anywhere to run his knight. Trading the queens off was, yeah, okay. So I'm okay with this. I feel like this is a fair trade. Um, I don't have any stacked pawns, I only have connected pawns, so this seems pretty good for me. I'm almost tempted to try to just stack the rooks here or something. Hmm. I feel like it might be time to start rerouting the knight. Um, I don't have great movement on f3 with the knight here. 
So it might be worth trying to get the knight over to something like c3 and start attacking uh, his other bishop here, his dark square bishop. Um, also, a5 is loose. That is a loose pawn. If you see me slowly sinking, the hydraulic strut in my office chair is failing, so I do occasionally have to lift it up. <laughs> One day I'm going to get around to fixing that. Ah, this kind of does ruin my plan as well. Um, hmm, I could always block him in too. Hmm. Block, and then this is defended twice. That would probably force him just to fall back. And then I can push my pawns up the board a little bit more as well, too. I don't want to go for the pure trade because then this reconnects his pawns. Um, so I'll just go for the pawn block. If he goes a4, I can just push b3. So really, he'll probably be forced back to like d7 or e8. Yeah, okay, so I don't think that was the move for him personally. Yeah, I think he should have just recognized that that pawn could move up. I also do have e4. Uh, e4, this uh, forks the pawn. He'll probably, if I if I were to go like e4, he'd probably jump back to e7 and just protect this pawn. I imagine. Yeah. Okay. So that was a, that was a good move. Yeah. So he lost a lot of tempo there. And I got a, basically two advancements on my pawns. So I'll attack his bishop here. I believe this will just force him back. If he goes back, I'll push d6. Um, let's see. I believe I can win the trade. Oh, interesting. 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 Hmm. Well... His bishops are going to be pretty valuable here. So do I want to go for the trade? How do I follow this up? Hmm. Hmm. I believe his bishop is just trapped if I go c5. Right? It's unfortunate that my light square bishop is sort of behind this pawn chain that's on the light squares. But what can you do? Yeah, his rooks are very inactive. Very inactive. Yeah, his bishop has nowhere to run, unfortunately. He kind of just blocked his escape with his bishop. Uh, in my opinion, he should have just defended the pawn. The f6 pawn with bishop e7. That probably would have been a slightly better move for him. I always feel slightly weird kind of critiquing the opponents mid-game and kind of talking about what their best moves are. Um, I don't want to sound like a know-it-all, but I'm just um, I'm trying to kind of put myself in the in the shoes of the opponent and talk more about like what would I do if I was in their shoes. Um, I'm not trying to say that they're making like good moves or bad moves necessarily. Um, I'm more just trying to say like, you know, if I was them, these are the moves I would be looking for. And then also I'm trying to just get a little bit better about thinking about what the opponent may play next to. So that's kind of where I'm at with that. But I'm really happy with c5. My pawns are progressing nicely. This is a really good square for the knight. Mm, okay. Well, I believe I can save this. I believe I can save this knight. Okay. 
And also I have a free pawn here on g5. It'd be really hard to ignore that. Yeah, that was a really good exchange. C5 was a really good move that set me up for this position. Okay. Mm. I'm a bit tempted to... to take that. Or just trade that off, rather. No, that was a free pawn. Yeah, uh, that rook was defending a6. And this bishop's not really defending anything right now at the moment, so I'll just take the free pawn. That is a hanging piece. And then this attacks his rook as well. Yeah, okay, GG. Yeah, nice. I'm really happy with this game. Um... I feel like I was just thinking through the moves pretty well here. Yeah, really good accuracy. Um, looks like... What is this? Yeah, it looks like he had one blunder that I didn't necessarily punish as much as I could have. But um, let me just go back to that. Okay, cool. So 1400. One of the higher ratings that I've gotten. He played like an 1100. Sure. So I had one great move, no blunders, two misses, zero mistakes. That's pretty rare. Uh, this may be one of the first games where I've had no mistakes. So that's kind of neat. Um, just through sort of reading conversations and chats and stuff, a lot of people say that the Philidor is not great. Maybe you guys can chime in on that too. <laughs> But most games that I've played where the where black plays the Philidor defense, I feel like white just has a really big advantage. Hmm. This is a miss, huh? Personally, I just wanted the queen trade. I figure getting his um king what am i trying to say here getting his king to lose the right to castle was a good move i'm just going to look at sort of the key positions here i was a little bit unsure of bishop c4 just kind of having it hang out in space on its own here i was a little unsure of but i wanted a castle as fast as i could since there was an open file here and he had the dark square bishop that could potentially harass e1 so I really just wanted a castle as fast as I could. Mm, okay, so let's see why this was such a bad move. Hmm. I miss an opportunity to eventually win material. Let's just see. Wow, that played out <laughs> very well. <laughs> that move was probably a bit above my pay grade. But um, yeah, let's think about that. So I knew I had the pin here, right? Right, so e6 with the bishop was was on the table. But I realistically, I, I wouldn't have been able to find that line. That's a very good line. Yeah, there was a little bit of debate here between taking with the pawn and taking with the bishop. But I just like the bishop idea because um, it created this really nice pawn chain here. Four pawns. That was really hard for him to deal with. Go back to f1. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, fortunately the bishop had a lot of uh, room to breathe here in this diagonal. So that was nice. Hmm, interesting. 
I thought that was a decent move. I thought bishop d2 was a pretty good move because I recognized the fact that his knight was gone no matter what. So I ignored an opportunity to create a pawn chain. I suppose. I'm really surprised that the engine recommended a4. That just seemed like it's so easy to block. This attacks a rook, winning a tempo when it moves away. Hmm. I don't know. I, I thought the opposite during the game. I thought this made him lose some tempo. Because his bishop just went back and forth, right? I mean, what did he really accomplish here? His, his bishop is still on d7. But my pawns are pushed up, so what did he really gain? How did he gain tempo from that? I don't quite understand. This was a really nice move here. I just don't know. Pushing the pawns just seems like a bad idea, right? Doesn't that just hang a pawn and potentially lose a bishop? I don't know. I think the engine's not firing on all of its cylinders today, if I'm being completely honest. <laughs> or maybe I sh shouldn't argue with it. Yeah, this move wasn't the great, we all know why. This is probably my favorite move of the game. Just recognizing the fact that his bishop was trapped and this was going to win some material was pretty fun to notice. And then the protected check here so he couldn't take with his king. Uh, that was a fun series of moves, and then this was able to um, get the knight to safety. That was pretty fun. Yep. So notice the hanging piece there. So yeah, really good string of moves towards the end there. Yeah, GG. ECU anime. Engine control unit anime 22 from Spain. And uh, yeah, thanks guys for watching, and I will see you guys tomorrow.